Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY and whether you're new or returning to the channel it's great to have you here and I hope you enjoy the video. In this episode I'll be making a bowl from mixed offcuts cast into purple, red and green iridescent coloured epoxy resin. So let's get started. After waxing the casting bucket I started to arrange the offcuts. I placed a section of U in the middle and set the offcuts around it. Having learned from my previous projects that small gaps tend to not show off the colours and can look dark, this time I was trying to leave some fairly big voids for the resin to fill. A quick shake of the bucket and it was time for the resin. The colour of choice for this project was purple, red and green iridescent mica powder. This is a single pre-mixed colourant and I figured I would need about three batches. I used my preferred brand of epoxy resin mixed at a 2 to 1 ratio, 150 grams of part B to 300 grams of part A. I thoroughly mixed each one using a paint mixing paddle in a cordless drill at low speed. Don't be tempted to turn the speed up to maximum. This will result in resin decorating everything within a one meter radius. Don't ask me how I know that. I'm not going to show all three being mixed, but after the last one was done, and because they were all the same colour, so there was no need to pre cook the resin, I poured all three into the casting straight away. I added weight to stop the offcuts floating and then it went into the pressure pot. With the lid tightly screwed down I added 50 to 55 psi and this was left to cure in a warm room. It's now a week later and the resin is well and truly cured. The offcuts have soaked up a fair bit, but it's still a good depth with no voids or cracks in it. I marked the centre and drilled a hole for the woodworm screw. I also drilled a small hole at the other end for the tailstock centre. All nice and secure and it was time for turning. I wound the speed up and as you can see the blank was well balanced even at 1300 rpm but 1000 rpm is more than enough. Using the Easywood Tools full size finisher I began by getting the blank to round before digging in to expose the offcuts. The resin was cutting very easily, I had expected it to be a bit tougher as it was now seven days since I cast the blank. Having said that, it was chipping a little bit, so I took some lighter cuts to see if that would help. The lighter cuts seemed to do the trick and the chipping all but disappeared. At this early stage I wasn't sure how the bowl would look, so I began to form a curve from the base into the side to start putting some shape to it. After stopping to check my progress, I could see a few thin pieces of resin that still needed to be removed. So for the next bit, I used a 3 8 bowl gouge to start to form the base, but this just made the chipping even worse, so I went back to the carbide cutter. I had been leaning towards forming a pedestal, but whilst removing the chipping, a form started to appear. A bowl with a curving side sat on a raised foot. I continued removing material until I was through the chipping, stopping to recenter the blank on the tailstock.
Once I was through the chipping and the thin patches of resin had gone, I squared up the foot with a quarter inch parting tool. This took a couple of goes and whilst I was at it, I removed material from the underside to flatten it off. With the foot roughly to shape, I moved on to refining the side. For this, I started shear scraping with a gouge, quickly switching back to the carbide cutter before removing the tool marks with a skew chisel. If you're wondering, I'm wearing work gloves because it's cold. I'm also being extra careful not to get them snagged on the spinning workpiece. Next I moved on to defining the rim. Taking the quarter inch parting tool, I cut into the protruding offcuts, gradually working my way down the side of the bowl until I was into solid resin. At this stage I didn't want to completely remove the waste from the top, that would be done later. I had a final go with a skew chisel to blend and fair the surface, followed by a tidy up on the foot with a parting tool, and then I cut the mortise. For the mortise I used the parting tool to define the outer edge and to remove most of the inner material. Then I used the dovetail cutter to cut the dovetail. I left a piece in the middle for tailstock support whilst I sanded the outer surface from 80 to 3000 grit. That done, I removed the last little bit in the mortise recess and sanded that to a fine finish. Sanding done, I removed the sharp edges from the protruding offcuts before applying the finish. To save showing this twice, I'll skip through this bit and show the process in detail towards the end of the video. Outside finished, I turned the bowl around and then I could get on with hollowing out the inside. For this I began with a freshly sharpened bowl gouge, removing the offcuts being careful not to dig in and get a catch. I was confident the bowl wouldn't fly off the lathe, but a bad catch could have taken a large chunk out and damaged the rim. Now with the uneven surface gone, I set to removing the waste material. Rough rule of thumb here was to work from the outside in, and as before, I would leave the centre support in place until a lot of the weight had been removed. The downside to doing this is that when I reach a certain depth, the tailstock gets in the way of the gouge, and then I have to switch to the carbide cutter. This is where the carbide excels. You can see from the amount of shavings flying around just how much is being removed. When it's like this, I have to frequently stop the lathe to check the thickness of the side and the base, not forgetting the mortise recess reduces the available material to play with. Another quick check reveals some damage to the outer edge of the rim, so using the skew chisel I reshaped the upper part of the outer surface. 
curving the rim inwards, effectively narrowing it. I'm glad I spotted this whilst I still had some material to spare. I kept going, thinning the bowl down. I wanted to make this a light bowl, with the resin being translucent when held up to the light. So I headed for a wall thickness of around 6mm or a quarter of an inch, with the rim and base slightly thicker. Confident the bowl wasn't going anywhere, I removed the centre support. I used the bowl gouge to thin it down to the point where it just snapped off. Then I removed what was left, and now you can clearly see the piece of you in the base, which gives me an idea for an upcoming project. A few more passes with a carbide cutter, and the inside was more or less done. There were a few tool marks to get rid of, so I used a large negative rate scraper to blend it all into one continuous smooth curve. The top side of the rim needed a bit of attention. I thought it would look better sloping inwards, and the edges needed a small radius adding. This was all done with a skew chisel. All done, next I sanded from 80 to 3000 grit. This was followed by a thorough clean down with denatured alcohol. Then two coats of sanding sealer, each one de-nibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad. Up next, Yorkshire grit, just a single coat, thoroughly cleaned away until no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. This is followed by the acrylic polishing. First up, Merca Polishine 10. A single coat, applied liberally and cleaned away with more paper towel. Then Polishine 5, another single coat, thoroughly cleaned away to leave a deep shine. And finally, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax. Two coats, polished off to seal and protect the surface. And that's it, another project finished. And this one looks good. The iridescent resin stands out against the offcuts and the piece of you in the middle just adds that little bit of interest. I'm very happy with this bowl and I hope you like it as well. I'd like to thank you all for watching and if you haven't already, please subscribe. The channel is inching closer to the 1000 subs and ding that bell to get notified when I upload a new video. A thumbs up will be much appreciated and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.